Okay, everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome. Thank you all so much for having me here today. Um, like I've been introduced, my name is Karim Manoufian. I'm one of the student coordinators at the University of Maryland, here to talk to you all about all things the college application, as well as some great tips and tricks um, for writing your essay, which, of course, the typical standard essay. Uh, standard answer is my favorite part of the application in total. I won't really be going into specifics about the University of Maryland, but really going into some great tips and tricks for you all to know. So the first and foremost, the application process can seem more daunting than it truly is. I remember being in your shoes many, many years ago. The main thing is, is really just getting started and being acquainted with it, playing around with the websites, and just attending workshops like this to start to know more. A great thing to note about the college application process is there are a few different types of applications. So some schools are on some multi-institution applications. Um, these are websites where you can just go in, put all your information in a stored locker, then click on what other universities you might want to apply to, and then answer their school-specific information. The two most common ones are definitely going to be the Common App. Um, that's definitely the largest one with over 900 plus members a part of it. And then also another one called the Standout Admissions Network as well, which is very similar. And it's nice, they have a lot of great other resources too to kind of understand applying into the university. Um, but this is the most common one you typically see. And this type of application you might see overall is the individual institution application. These are applications only for one specific school that you have to go on the school's website in order to find the application and then apply usually directly on their website. One major organization that does this kind of in the DC, Maryland area is Georgetown. Um, they have their own specific application for that specific school. You would log on to their website and they have all the information out there. So it's a good thing to keep track of, um, especially as you start to kind of create your college list I always try to make a running list of all the colleges I like, kind of mark down what platform they might be on and so forth. It's a great way to kind of dip your toe into the process. But like I said, the Common App is definitely the largest. And again, there's a lot of great application resources on there. So just learn more about the different colleges and exploring not only large colleges, but small, private and public, and so forth and so on, in state and out of state. Look at them all, explore them all still, so that way you can really make the best choice for yourself. And again, very similar. There's a virtual locker for you to go ahead and store all your information in that makes things pretty easy with the Standout Admissions Network. Now, when you're applying to the university, every application will ask for certain things in addition to the application itself. So first off, you're gonna have the application form, and then typically there are usual fees also acquainted with the college application. Some schools, like the University of Maryland, already have fee waivers built in to the application. Or there's also other fee waivers, example, for first-generation students, low-income students. Some schools even offer specific fee waivers if you attend any of their specific events and so forth. It's a great thing to go ahead and check to see if you can have any specific fee waivers, because um, it just makes your life a little bit easier and so forth. Of course, we're going to need to see high school transcripts. That's a big one. We want to be able to celebrate all your accomplishments on the high school level. So you will always be asked to send in that high school transcript with all your different grades, um, marking any other academic rigor that you might have, like honors, AP, IB, if you're able to take any of those specific courses and so forth. Also, in addition to that, let's say if you have taken any dual enrollment courses or courses um, in general on the college level, we'll typically also ask to see those college transcripts as well. So again, we can celebrate your accomplishments and where you're kind of challenging yourself as a high school student already taking college coursework. In terms of test scores, another academic portion of the application, um, schools typically accept a variety of different things. The most standard is going to be the SAT or the ACT. Probably have already heard of these very many times. Um, two really amazing examinations that schools offer. Um, a good thing to note though, especially with the pandemic and how things have changed, some schools still require test scores, some schools don't require test scores, and some schools are actually test optional, where you, the student, gets to choose if A, you want to submit your test scores, or B, you don't want to submit your test scores. 
Typically, that's entirely up to you in that process. I always highly recommend looking at a school's averages and kind of seeing where you fall in everything. The most typical answer you're going to get from any college admissions counselor is if you are debating whether or not to submit your test scores, see where you fall in the averages. Typically, if you're on the higher end of the averages to above, can be great to submit your test scores. Then if you're on the lower averages and even lower than that, even though your score might still be amazing in the context, maybe applying to optional may be a better fit for you just to be more advantaged in your application process. But keep note of this, some schools, um, it varies in between and so forth. For example, for the University of Maryland, we are still test optional. It's entirely up to students whether or not they want to submit their test scores or not. And typically, we have found as a general trend in the college application cycle, it's a 50-50 split. 50% of students submit their test scores, 50% do not. And typically, even with admitted students, 50% submit their test scores, 50% do not. So it's up to you. There's some other cool examinations as well with the test score process. Um, the SAT also offers like subject testing. If you want to take specific testing um, outside of that core math and English, some schools accept these tests, some do not. For the University of Maryland, for example, we don't really look at subject testing. We only look at SAT and ACT. Another cool component of this is let's say if you decide to take the SAT multiple times or the ACT multiple times. Some schools even do super score these examinations as well. And what that means is let's say one time you took the SAT, you got a really high score in English, but didn't do that great in math. But the next time you did it, you did better in math, but not that well in English. You can typically send in both those scores to the school and they can actually super score it, taking in your two highest scores in math and English and combining it and making sure that you have the highest test score possible. Not every school does this, majority don't. So it's a good thing to also keep notes when you're kind of trying to decide what your test score looks like and whether or not you want to submit your test scores. Going on further, of course, I'm going to be getting more in depth with the college essay later on in this presentation. But the college essay is there and is a requirement of the college application process. Every school tends to have one singular essay, at least. Typical for students applying in with the Common App, again, the largest basis out there. The Common App essay uh, will typically be the main essay for the school that you're applying to as well, which makes it pretty easy. Some schools also, in addition to the college essay, also has short answer questions as well. These can vary. Sometimes they're like the University of Maryland, or they're just short questions like, what did you do last Tuesday? Tell me fun facts you recently learned. And other times they can be more of like, a, just a whole paragraph instead, asking you to elaborate on any specific subjects you might find interesting, or any projects you recently did, or a lesson you recently learned. These are all common topics as well. And schools really try to divide that as well. So keep track of that. Um, you'll never be denied because of your college essay or these short answer questions. However, these are questions that help us get to know you more as a college student because there's only one person who can really talk about you, um, and that's yourself. And again, we'll be getting more in depth with this portion later, so we'll save off any other extra things I have to say till then. Next up, of course, is going to be the activity list um, or resume. This is really the portion of the application that you get to brag about yourself and let us know everything you've been involved in. That includes things inside the classroom, outside the classroom, extracurriculars, if you have any leadership. This can also include household responsibilities. If you have any household chores, if you have responsibilities at home, um, let us know all the information. This will include any activity that you participate in. So really think, on a day-to-day, -day, what are you doing? And making sure that you're putting that in your activity list. It really just helps us shape not only your day-to-day, -day, your week-by-week, -week, your month-by-month, -month, and of course, your year-by-year. -year. If you've done any shadow opportunities, um, if you have any specific like mentorships, you're learning more, if you've attended any um, state conference events for any activities you've been participating in, let us know everything. We want to hear it all. And of course, another part of the application, um, you, we also have the federal application for student aid. Of course, you're gonna have a presentation a little bit more about financial aid and workshop as well, but it's a great thing to go ahead and keep note 
Um, this will allow you to get any different resources in terms of funding, in terms of grants, need-based financial aid, and so forth. Um, it can really help make the college application um, and the process uh, a little bit more affordable for students, especially if offered any specific grants and opportunities. But again, you'll hear more about that in the later segments to come. And also, and last but not least, another component of the college application is going to be the letters of recommendation. Now, these letters of recommendation are really there for us to get to know you through your faculty's eyes. Typically, you will ask for your counselor to send in a letter of recommendation and typically a teacher or community leader and so forth. These are just there so we can really see um, how you are inside the classroom. Um, it's a really awesome experience too for students, um, especially if let's say you struggled in a class, but let's say a teacher can really speak well about how well you really tried to persevere, or let's say you always go above and above. A teacher can speak really well about that as well. Typically, I would say the standard um, is usually two. Again, it's one from a counselor and one from a teacher. However, I typically see students submitting uh, maybe even two teachers or three. My advice is always, again, that standard two, but if you are choosing to submit more, um, to make sure you're kind of diversifying things a little bit. If you're having a teacher submit a letter or recommendation for the math department, maybe having a teacher from the English department or humanities, like history, or maybe even music or art teacher, anybody can write these letters of recommendation for you. So really sit back and think, who as a teacher may know me the best, who can really speak well on my work ethic, and who I am both inside and outside the classroom, and have them go ahead and write this letter of recommendation for you. Going forward, of course, every university has their own specific checklist. Typically, if you just Google um, both University of Maryland and then application checklist, everything will populate and so forth. This is our list. I kind of mentioned it throughout the whole entire presentation today. But the reason why I'm highlighting this is every university might have one extra step as well that's a little bit different um, than the standard application process. For example, we have something called the TERP application portal. So once a student submits their application, they're actually able to verify their application themselves to make sure everything is complete. So be mindful of that. Um, every university is a little bit different, but majority of them just have the standard application on the Common App. Another cool thing about the college application process is some college applications are actually more holistic in nature. Um, some just mostly look at your academics and so forth, but a lot of us really try to, again, shape who you are and really have that help us figure out not only if you're a good fit for the institution, but if the institution is a good fit for you. This is Maryland's examples of our holistic application. And again, why it's really important for students to tell us everything and everything about themselves on the application. Because again, we only know as much as students are telling us. So take a look at all of these. You'll see things like community involvement, uh, demonstrated leadership, academic endeavors outside the classroom, progression of performance, worth of life experiences. Um, if a student has any learning differences, their family educational background, we took all that into context in the application. So it's a good thing to note that we're really trying to humanize the application and really try to get to know you, the students. And again, learning this information I found when I was in your shoes way, way back when kind of helped humanize the application. I didn't really know what us admissions counselors were looking for. But again, we're trying to get to know you. That is the whole purpose of the college application. Now, Oh, my, my slides are a little mix, mixed up there. Sorry about that. But in terms of application deadlines, here are some good things to go ahead and keep track of. There are some different wording that you really need to keep track of when applying to universities and trying to figure out the best time to apply. So there's four main types of decisions um, in terms of application deadlines. The first is being early decision. When you apply early decision with a school, you are saying that if you get into this university, you will go to that school. It is a binding contract. Typically, this is the very first deadline that some schools will offer. And again, they're saying that if you apply to this university and you get in, that is it. You're going to this university because you're so excited. It is your number one school and opportunity. Next up will be primarily what majority of schools have called early action. This is typically the very first deadline that a lot of schools offer, and it's a non-binding contract, meaning it's the very first deadline, but 
you can still look at other universities. If you're accepted into university, you don't have to go there. Um, you can actually still explore all the other schools that you are accepted into and figure out where is the best fit for you. Typically, um, you can also get different priority considerations. A lot of schools give priority considerations for merit scholarships, special programs, and admissions when you apply with their very first deadline, because you're the very first pool of applicants they're seeing when they're reviewing for their freshman year class. Of course, the University of Maryland, we have our deadline, and that's going to be November 1st. It is the best time to apply to university with. So keep track of all of these. Again, um, early action is typically the best time to apply to any university. Then, of course, there's another decision um, called regular decision. These are just standard regular decisions. You apply with them. Um, it's typically a final deadline. It's the last time they will be accepting application. Typically, there's no special benefits or no priority consideration. That really comes with the early decision and early action pool. But your application will still be considered. You just might not have any special benefits. Then, of course, there's another type of application deadline called rolling. That means there's no fixed deadline. Um, you can go ahead and apply at your time and at your leisure. And then you also hear about your decision kind of at the leisure as well. Our notifications will always come by, based on the school's policies. So sometimes it can be a quick turnover of a couple months. Sometimes it can be even faster than that or slower. It's kind of up. But with early decision, early action, and regular decision, typically there's a set deadline. So you apply by a certain time and you hear back by a certain time. Or with rolling, you can really hear back at any specific time. Now, when completing your application, it's really important that you check on your application status. Um, it's really important and it's just as important as meeting the application deadline. You want to make sure that you're giving yourself the best advantages and making sure that you're applying with any of those main deadlines. Also, typically, it is the student's responsibility to verify that all materials have been received. Of course, admissions counselors like myself are always going to help students. You can always send us an email, give us a call, and we're more than happy to verify that everything is in for you and that you're all set. And of course, too, it's also important to send important updates. If you are asking any of your counselors or teachers for letters or recommendations, following up with them and making sure that everything is submitted. It can be really nice to go ahead and ask them a few weeks ahead of time before the application is due, so that way they have enough time as well to go ahead and complete all those requirements. You don't want to be telling every, them everything a few days before the deadline, because um, it just adds more stress. You want to make sure that's kind of alleviated off your plate and so forth. Also, check your email. Um, if there's one thing about a call, um, is that we do love to send an email. It's probably our favorite thing. We love to keep you updated about different opportunities, to visit our campuses, get connected virtually, and just learn more about the process. And also, don't be afraid to relax. Attending workshops like this is a great way to kind of learn more. And then also just kind of starting the application and creating accounts on the Common App, and then maybe ignoring it for a couple days. Um, take a step back, make sure that you're keeping in check with yourself, um, but don't be afraid to start is the main thing. Uh, you don't want to procrastinate it. Um, take it from somebody who did. It was not fun doing all my college applications on the two-week deadline before it was due. Highly don't recommend it. So start early so you can take your time with things. And of course, when finding your education, again, um, it's really important that you pay attention to the FAFSA deadline and so forth. Um, and also when the merit scholarship opportunities become available for students. Typically, um, some schools have it, so it's attached to the application, and some schools might also have it so that it is separate. Then, in types of admission decisions, typically you can see um, these four on the screen. The very standard is going to be you apply in the fall semester for the next fall. Very standard. Some schools at the University of Maryland actually offer same spring admission as well. Um, this is typical for when a school thinks that you still be a great fit for the university, but due to spacing, we cannot extend you fall admission, so we do extend spring. And again, some universities like the University of Maryland still have programs like Freshman Connection that will bring you on campus during the fall semester, so you're still living the same life as a fall student, but you might just be taking classes off hours from like 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. versus the standard 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So take a note of that. Um, these are pretty standard for most universities out there. And then, of course, there's also an option for being waitlisted. This means, again, that they think you'd be a good fit for the university. However, due to spacing, they're not able to offer you a direct spot. 
So depending on the class, their freshman year class falls, and not too many students are actually enrolling at the university and so forth, more spots become available, and then students are moved up from the wait list. So if you see wait list, don't worry. That doesn't mean uh, you are not extended admission yet. Uh, it just means you have a little bit more of a waiting period. And then of course, if you're not offered any of these three types of decisions, you would typically extend it on this not right now decision, as I like to call it. Most universities also have a great transfer process. So if you're not directly admitted to the university, it doesn't mean you won't always be able to go there. It just means that you might have to reapply as a transfer student later on down the road. But um, please make note of the confirmation deadlines for each university. Um, everyone is different. Um, so you will have a deadline of when you do have to make your decision by. The most standard and typical is going to be that May 1st deadline um, with a lot of major schools, um, just like the University of Maryland. Also, helpful hint. Um, most institutions already have their applications available. They standardly became available around August 1st. Um, so it's never too early to get started, even now in September. Um, Applications are typically due, like I said, for early action sometime in November, December, um, maybe even earlier for early de uh, decisions, so forth. So don't be afraid to kind of get started if you haven't already. Also, ask for help. Have a teacher, a friend, a family member, proof you read your essay, your resume, and so forth, or go over your college application with you. I know we're all willing to kind of go ahead and extend a hand as long as you're willing to ask for help. So don't be afraid to. And then again, early requests for letters of recommendation. Um, these are essays, essentially, for your teachers and counselors. So you want to give them about three to four weeks um, notice in advance that, hey, I might need this from you. And of course, um, give them the time and then follow up with them as well to make sure it is submitted. Now we're going to be going a little bit more in depth about writing an essay and what um, you can expect when going into it, as well as some really great tips and tricks that I learned over my past three and a half years at the university. So you might be wondering, so why are college essays required? Why are they important? And again, it gives us a chance to learn more about you outside of the classroom. Of course, your letters of recommendation, your application general, let us know more about you, academically speaking, and kind of who you are inside the classroom with discussions and so forth and extracurriculars. But who are you beyond that? We want to know. It gives us, it gives you also the opportunity to give us any additional information about any extenuating circumstances, and then we feel like you haven't been able already to talk about on the college application and so forth. And it's also just overall instrumental during the review of special programs if any school offers them to let us know if you're a good fit for any schools who have the honors program or any other programs that the university may offer. When selecting an essay topic, um, you don't just have to pick from a straw hat, um, pick from open air. Typically, every university will already have a variety of different essay topics for you to choose from to make it a little bit easier about what to write about. So the Common App, um, the Coalition, and typically the university's website will all have these options available for you. However, if let's say you already feel like you have an essay that speaks very well true to you, typically there's also an option that says create your own essay topic as well. Personally, I find that to be the most difficult option on there, um, especially trying to phrase and create a question that revolves around your essay. However, it is an option for most students. Um, but again, there's already some excellent essay topics already available on each of these websites for students to go ahead and figure out what they can write the best about. I recommend too, if you don't really know what essay topic you might want to do, but a couple of sound interesting, just go ahead and start putting pen to paper. See which one is the easiest for you to write about and start from there. Now you might be saying too, okay, sounds pretty good, but what are some general ideas to write about? What can I write about? So there's a lot of different things for students. You can write about an academic experience, if you have any accomplishments, Maybe you've been really involved in an activity, an organization, or a sport, and you want to write about that. If you have any challenges that you face, any defining moments in your life, you can write about your family, of course. If you have any future direction and plans or goals already, let's say you know that you want to become a lawyer or you want to go into medical school. Excellent. What kind of led you down that pathway? Um, is there anything institution specific? Let's say if you have a core memory with any Maryland school or even an outside school that you're like, this is the reason why I want to go there. Let us know. 
or maybe even like travel experiences and so forth that you have. These are all great ideas about what to write about. And again, you kind of be surprised too about how many students kind of across the globe may have similar ideas about what to write about. However, take note, there's only one person who can really tell a story about yourself and that's yourself. So really think about what you want to say and less about what you think we want to hear. Um, we just kind of want to explore and go along this journey with you about who you are. Now, again, tips to write a strong essay. You want to write from your own experience. You are the main topic. So even if, let's say, you're writing about a family member who might be a role model to you, that's great. But make sure that you always have it reflected back on yourself. Again, you are going to be the main topic of your essay. It is your college application. We want to hear about you. And be original. Be fun with it. Um, think about kind of who you want to be represented on your piece of paper as well. Um, I know that in, when I was in my college application essay, I was pretty studious student back in the day. Uh, I was pretty paper book. Um, I felt like my personality wasn't really showing. Um, so I tried to have a little bit more fun, kind of write like a little comedy sketch so that the universities I applied to can know that like, hey, like, um, I am, I think, outside the box type person and so forth. There's a lot of different essay topics out there. And again, content is key. You want to make sure that you're grabbing your attention and really within those first couple lines um, and making sure that you're zoning in and we're able to grab into your story. Just as the same way that you want to make sure that your friends are paying attention where you're telling a story, how can you grab our attention? Think of things like that. And also be specific. Really think about the how, not necessarily the what. You really want to describe things to us and not just say things really point blank and have a little imagery with it. So let's say if you're writing about how fall is your favorite season, you could just say, fall is my favorite season. Or you could say, I love it when the leaves change color and I know that winter is coming. I know that you love fall. Or let's say that you really want to go into biology because you love animals. You could say that you love animals, or you can say um, the very first time uh, you saw a giraffe at the zoo, you felt like your life was changed and you knew that you wanted to work with animals. Anything like that, again, you're really describing things to us. But again, you want to remember that you want to keep with the content as well. You don't want to have too much of a flower language that you're not really giving us a main point to your essay overall. And that's why it's really important to write, revise, and repeat. Um, you should always have someone else to review your college application and essay. You can give it to anybody and ask them too, like, hey, what about me did you learn from this essay? It's a great way to kind of create like a mock simulation of the college application and make sure that you're saying exactly what, to want, what you want to. Also, it's important to remember your audience. Again, this is for a college application. So we're trying to get to know more of you on that scale. Again, inside and outside the classroom, thinking back to those essay ideas, any defining moments, um, anything that stands out to you in your high school career, anything that really represents you, that's what we want to know. Also, again, proofreading your essay is a big thing. Um, you, a great way to go ahead and do that is reading your essay out loud. Um, it's a great way to catch things that you might not really catch when you're just reading through things a couple times. I know that's big with me. Even before I send out any emails now, I always have to say it out loud to myself because I might just have a little grammatical mistake here and there that I might not catch um, if I was just reading things over and over again. But now we know that grammatical errors do happen and so forth, or let's say institution mistakes where you're writing about um, Salisbury University, but you might say University of Maryland instead and vice versa, that's okay. Uh, just be wary and make sure that you are proofreading your essay before you hit submit, so that way any of those small little mistakes aren't uh, uh, pop up in your application. And again, some other great tips. Do not, again, let someone else write your essay. Again, we wanna hear from you in your own words about the college applicant, uh, about who you are. Only one person can write your essay, and that is you, and tell your story. So don't let someone else st steal your words. Um, also, make sure that you're staying within the word count limit. Um, typically, I would say the standard is right around 650 to 850, I would say, for the standard word count of a long essay of, let's say, the Common App. Um, you want to make sure that you're sticking within these realms. It's the same as an assignment you might turn in for English class or history and so forth. You want to make sure that you're following the rules that are set. 
If it's one or two words over, typically you're still able to submit the application. So it's not the end all be all, but again, you want to make sure that you're making sure that you're sticking to the word count and also using all the space that you have to go ahead and talk about any specific topic that you might want to. And these word count limits also sit not only for the essay, but also for the short answer questions as well. If it's a short answer question, typically they want you to stay within those specific limits. Also, be careful how much fluff you kind of add. If you're already describing, uh, let's say that going back to that fall example, how much you love fall, you don't have to keep on repeating it that constantly throughout the essay. You want to make sure that you're really honing in on that content that you want to go for and maybe why fall is so important to you or why you specifically write it. And again, you want to make sure that you double check for any grammatical errors and any school specific information. <laughs> It'll be all like I said, but you want to make sure that just as you submit any assignment, you're trying to give your best foot forward in this approach. And that really summarizes my two workshops for you all today. Thank you all so much for staying tuned. Um, and I'll hand it back to our lovely host today. Hey, does anybody have any questions? Uh, you've you've got the um, ear of a of a college admissions counselor, so feel free to ask away. And you can come off mute or if you want to put it in the chat as well, I believe that should be fine. Yep, you can put it in the chat also. The college application though, um, especially in the essay, again, it's majority of our like favorite thing to read. Because again, it really humanizes the application. Even though I meet you all right now, um, and I can meet you all again later, or you meet other admissions counselors and so forth. We might not be the only ones who read your college application and your essay. It will go through many, many hands. So you really, again, want to focus in on what you want to say about yourself. Oh, great question somebody asked in the chat. You said, how are the letters of recommendation submitted? So it does vary school by school, kind of how you were talking about the new platform as you all switch out of Naviance. Um, typically, um, your teachers will go to uh, either the counselors and they know the exact platform they'll go ahead and submit it on, or when you put in the teacher's names, they'll be prompted with a link to go ahead and submit those letters of recommendation. Somebody asked you, if you plan on transferring to another university, um, will you need typically an essay? And yes, um, typically the, uh, the essays for freshman applications tend to be a little bit more intense and a little bit more lengthy than a transfer essay, um, but you will typically need an, an essay as well for a transfer applications too. They're a little bit shorter typically in length, um, just kind of describing why you might want to transfer and where you want to go in the future and so forth. Yeah, great question. Uh, another question is about the counselor letter recommendation. Yes, you always want to make sure that you're asking your counselor for a letter of recommendation, especially if it's required. Your counselor also, even if they don't know you entirely, let's say if you have a new counselor every year or a new one came in and so forth, you will also give us great context of kind of what your school offers in terms of academics. Um, also tell us any other key things and notes about the school, anything that's changed within the year and so forth. But they also typically let us know too. They're like, hey, I haven't known this student for so long, but this is what I do know about them. But they always make sure they give us that context and so forth. Karina, I um I had a question about the FAFSA. We've been hearing that it will go live in December. Is that what you are also hearing in admissions? Mm -hmm. Yes, it should go live in December, the new one. Um, my slide wasn't my updated one. I realized I did forget to change that, so I do apologize. But yeah, it's That's okay. opening up in December. And I have another question, and I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer it or, or if Mr. Lowe, our school counselor who's on, he might be able to answer this, or he might cover it in his presentation that's next. Um, it says, uh, will we need to order transcripts every time we fill out an application? Do they need to, or do they need to come directly from the high school? You want me to take it, Karina? Um, yeah, go yeah. right ahead. I can ask anything so, if I need to. Yeah, so so you'll request it through um, school links. Um, so you won't have to order them. They don't cost any money. Um, you just and I'll, I'll go through my presentation um, on how to request the the transcripts. But your your counselor will, will be in charge of sending those transcripts to the school. Yeah, definitely makes the process a little easier. You just go in and probably click a button and it sends it off and says, "Hey, send it to this school for me," and so forth. Um, 
typically too on the college application you might be asked to go ahead and complete your own um copy of your transcript as well but you always want to make sure that you're submitting in the official copy as well to most schools okay great questions in the chat now everybody um if you have any more please feel free to put them in Or if not, if we did an excellent job already, we can continue on with our programming if that's okay. Yep, great. Thank you. Thank you, Karina, for your time tonight. We appreciate it. A lot of really good information. Yes, thank you all for having me and best of luck in your cost searching journey, everybody.